make a bezel setting like this, you'd normally use a collet block or bezel block, and these are quite expensive. So in this lesson, I'm going to show you how to make this bezel setting template so that you can make settings at the right angle like this. Now if you go online, the lesson's still free, but you'll see that there's a handout with the instructions. So these two rings are just added to the website and I made the settings by using the bezel setting template. It's very handy and easy to use. Check it out. I'm going to show you how to make this bezel setting template and this is made for a 17 degree setting. 17 degrees is determined by this square line here and these angle lines here. These are at 17 degrees. Most settings in the jewellery industry are that angle. But if you wanted to make settings at 20 degrees, which is a more open angle, then you'd start the angle lines at 20 degrees. Included with the lesson is the instruction sheet. Check it out. I'm using a piece of brass to make the template. It can be copper if you want. The thickness doesn't matter, but make sure that you've cleaned one face and it's perfectly square. On the long side, measure off five millimeters and scribe a line. And on the short side, measure off 15 millimeters. And again, scribe the line across. Now we're going to centre punch the cross mark there. Always centre punch with a steel background, otherwise, if you use wood, it will dent the metal. Put some paper. I'm using a paper background now and a little bit of blue tack to stop the piece moving around. Now with your protractor just line it up so that the 90 degree mark or line and the baseline there corresponds with your markings. Now mark off 10, 15, 17 degrees from the 90 degree mark and then on the other side 10, 15, 17 degrees from the other side. So very carefully take your protractor away and without moving the brass scribe the angled lines from the center punch mark. Take my time to line it up properly. Okay. So that angle from that side to that side should be 34 degrees. So let's check that from the zero mark there. Line that up with one side, put the cross mark of the protractor where the center punch is and just follow this scribe line here and it should line up with 34. If it's one or two degrees out it's not 
that important. I've now got my ruler on the uh, 90 degree line and I'm just marking off increments of five millimeters. Dividers, set them to those markings and scribe from the end line to the baseline. Open the dividers up to meet the other marking and again scribe across nice and deep. Go all the way until you've done all six arcs. Now set your dividers to three millimeters and mark off from the top arc. all the way to the angled line. Inscribe from those points right to the Center punch mark. Take your time so that all the lines are scribed correctly. This template is not only good for round settings of any size, but you can also use it for shape settings. You can check those lessons out in the silver level, where I show you how to make and use a template like this, but you'll find that this is a lot easier to use. For this project, I'm using a 6.5mm round CZ and I'm going to be using my bezel setting template to make the setting because I can't assume that everyone's got a collet block and once you learn this method you'll see how easy it is so what you do is you take the diameter of the stone and you times it by pi 3.14 and that in this case gives me a measurement of rounded off to 20.4 now I'm going to be using one millimeter thick sheet to make the setting so deduct the thickness and that's given me 19.4 and because I've made these settings a few times before I know the way I do it I tend to open out the setting a fraction towards the end so I'm going to reduce that figure only by 0.4 so I'm going to set my dividers to 19 now once you've had a little bit of experience making settings then you might work out that you need to deduct a little bit more or a little bit less so just bear that in mind have a go first make it in brass or copper and see how you go so you need a good pair of dividers to do this set your dividers to 19 mil and on your setting template from the center punch mark you've got two end lines there so run your dividers towards the end lines and then as you come into the arc area 
Just see which arc will fit the setting that you've got on your dividers. So it doesn't quite fit this second arc here, but it does fit into the third arc. So that is the curvature that I'm going to make the setting. So what you need to do is just squeeze your dividers down to that setting and on your piece of paper right in the corner there just stick one end of your dividers in nice and firm just put a little point mark right at the edge there just ensure that you can get your 19 millimeters in so this is way over this is 23 mil from point to point so I know that that will work so first of all I'm going to do a light scratch on the paper not too deep because it will come away and I just need it just for a second to stay in one piece so work out what height you're going to make your setting in this case I'm going to make it six millimeters so I'll just mark off six mil and stick my dividers back in just inside the corner squeeze my dividers to that setting and this time I can be a little bit firmer I'll go over it once without scrunching up the paper twice until the paper comes away Okay, so we don't need that bit. I'll pull it off in a minute. I'm going to open my dividers back up to the original setting for the top arc. Out there. And again, I'll just go over it a couple of times so that I don't need to use my scissors because I'm lazy. You can use your scissors if you want, but you get a much nicer cut like that. So that'll just come away quite easily. There and there. So now, with the sheet of silver that I'm going to use, I need to make sure that, that fits in somewhere. Here. I'm trying to be as economical as possible. And that's going to fit nicely into that corner there. I won't have much wastage there. This uh, blue stick's really handy for doing this kind of work when you're cutting out and using paper as a template. So just smear a little bit on. And And just roll it around to make sure it's on the paper properly. There we go, get it right into the corner. Looking good. And now I'll leave that for five minutes to set. Now before we form the setting, we need to anneal it and remove the paper. So the paper will just burn off when you anneal it. Don't set off any alarms. Make sure the room is ventilated. Now use the curve on the template to check the end line and make sure it's the right angle. So I just need to file that to get it to the right angle. And once it matches that angle, you can see there that, that fits the angle there. And then set your dividers to 22, sorry, 19 mil. Okay, so the original setting of 19mm and put one point on the very corner 
and then mark at the 19 mil point. So that looks correct there. Line it up again and just have a look at where that marking comes to on your template. So it's just between these two marks here. Now I like to use a scalpel for doing my marking because I can keep it dead straight and use the back of the, the scalpel to line it up properly. So what I'm doing is I'm putting it right across the silver strip and getting the uh, scalpel line right on the center punch mark there. So once I've got that I can just dig it in a little bit I'll drag it back. So that angle there is the correct angle and it's the correct length as well. So just to save time I'm going to snip that off just a little bit over using my side cutters and I can just pile it up to the line. Before we form it I'm just going to file a slight angle on the ends there because when the two ends come together they come they meet up at a slight angle they don't meet up straight so we just need to um, file a very slight angle so that when it comes together we'll have no gaps slight angle but make sure that you fold or bend the setting in the right direction now. So I've got the angle going inwards like that and to bend it use a good sturdy pair of round nose pliers like so and just grip the strip right at the end, right at the very end, as close to the end as possible at the same angle as you filed it. So whatever you do, don't try and bend it like that. Gotta get it right on the end at the right angle. And once you've done that, grip and push with your thumb. Just get a nice curve on the end. Turn it around and do the same on the other side. So don't go too far. So there again, gripping pretty tight, right angle. Right there, so now it is, and push it around, try and get it nice and curved at the end. So I'll turn my pliers around because it looked a bit straight there, as you can see. So I'll turn around and bend it. So you should be able to do it with your fingers to start with, and then you can use your bench peg to uh, help get it together. Now you can see that they're not going to meet right, so just keep watching that. I need to bend this one down so that it lines up with the other side. You can just see that there. So I'm going to push it into my bench peg. So now it's more lined up. Once you've done this a couple of times it becomes easier. You can see I've got the fat part of my pliers where the top of the setting will be and I'm just squeezing it onto my, the side of my bench peg really important that you get it to line up correct so that's not quite lined up on the bottom there and the top looks as though it's, it's a little bit more work I just need to twist this one down Can you see that so, Now it's lined up a bit better. Just twist this one up. You can use your parallel pliers if you need to. And then if I twist it like that, I can now use my nylon pliers to squeeze it together. If you haven't got nylon pliers, you can use your chain nose pliers. You will cause a few. Uh, tool marks, but uh, if the metal is thick enough to start with, you can just file it out. Now, what you're not going to be able to do when you're doing this is 
get the joint together tight enough to solder without doing a little bit of a crafty move when we're doing the solder because you can't cross the the ends over and put tension in as you would with a shank so you can see the angle uh, of the ends works quite well but there's a bit of a gap so what I'm going to do is to just get that a little bit tighter again let's get it as tight as I can you can be quite forceful with these nylon pliers they're pretty good okay that's lined up now you can see there and there and now I'm just going to run through once with my saw blade and that cleans the joint and makes makes it perfect so when it comes together there'll be no gaps whatsoever so now I'm going to flux that and I'm going to show you how to close that gap up so I've got a little snippet of hard solder I'll pick it up with my solder pick uh, you can place it on with your brush uh, beforehand if you prefer I like to just um, do it this way I just find it a lot easier to put it right in the right spot. So look, the solder's run, um, but it's not sealed that joint. So the way to do it is to use spring-loaded solder tweezers like this, and just grip it on the edge there. And I'm looking directly at the joint there, and I'm at the correct angle. I'm going to squeeze. Swing it along. That's it just going to squeeze these, the setting onto the solder mat as I reheat it up and as it becomes red hot it softens enough for that gap to close right up okay if you go too hard you will collapse the setting so just find the right tension so that's now seal that joint perfectly whatever you do and uh, a lot of students learn the hard way when you're soldering you never use your tweezers loaded tweezers like this because it will collapse that tension stays right through the heating process and it will just fall apart so I see that disaster quite often so these are for holding work like that and not like that so that's where it's sat now on the setting and I like a, a stone to sit around about a third of the way into the thickness so I think that's going to work really well so um, and the reason that I like this don't sit that way is it makes it a lot easier for bezel setting so, um, I will be showing you how to bezel set this later but I might do something a bit different we'll see so I'm just getting rid of the excess, excess solder uh, and I'll just level off the bottom and the top although it's not too bad as is so just a quick scrape over the bottom that's it and on the top making sure it's nice and parallel so you can see that and you'll also see I'll just show you with the setting um, even before we start doing the fine tuning with the uh, with the doming block, that when you lay it across the template, these angles here, which represent 17 degrees from the access point, you'll see that it's it it's perfect. It works really really well this method. So let's uh, do some final forming now. So some of my courses can be a little bit restrictive for. Uh, online students if you haven't got all the gear and this is one of my favorite tools it's a collet block I use it pretty much all the time when I'm making solitaires and a lot of the other um, projects in the uh, silver level training program but doing it this way as long as you've got a doming block you you'll be able to um, take up those solitaire lessons no problem um, and most hobby jewelers and professional jewelers have a doming block it's one of the first things you should get so now um, with 
my doming punches. I've got a selection here that I'm going to work with. The first thing I'm going to do is just um, a slightly smaller one. There we go. I'll just make the bottom of the setting round and a tap upside down and then bring it over to one of the smaller holes and just rest it on top. It's not going inside, it's just on top and that's just to protect the, the bottom of the punch if it breaks through and hits the block while the other way just to be on the safe side, just um, tap it on wood and that's not going to damage your punch. So now we've got the bottom of the setting perfectly round, so we can start forming the inside going up. So the next size punch I'm going to use is this one, and this one goes all the way into the setting. And the good thing about this, if you've uh, pickled the setting, it will be white inside. So uh, when you tap the punch in there, it'll leave a little silver or grey looking ring on the inside. You can see the start of it on the inside. And once that's uh, connected all the way around, you know it's perfectly round. Now it's made contact, so that's mostly done. I'm just going to change the punch to the next size up, and you'll see a ring forming slightly above that. And this is the last one I will be using. You can see it's just on the inside edge of the setting. I don't want to flare it out too much. That looks about right. And if I did flare it out too much, all you do is you turn it upside down, put it into one of the doming holes make sure you tap it dead square on and that'll just squeeze it in a little bit so you need your stone just to check where it's at and the same deal for the bottom of the setting if you haven't got it perfectly round then just tap it in one of the holes that isn't going to contact the outside of the setting otherwise you're going to mark it and if you're a little bit concerned about not striking it square on then put a hammer on top and then tap the other end of the hammer and that will ensure that it is tapped at the right angle. So we'll just have a look with the stone in place and see how it looks. Now because I squeezed it in a little bit it's a bit tight which is good because I haven't got perfect contact on the inside so I can work the punches up through the setting again being a little bit firmer and making sure that I get those marks on the inside. So I'm just swapping from one punch to the other. Okay, that looks about right now. And going back to my original measurements when I um, took the one mil thickness off and then a, a little bit more, it worked out about right for me. But uh, like I say, have a go with copper or brass first and see how you go. Now I'm just about to file it up to get rid of the tool marks, and you can just see it's slightly turned up at this end here. Now I'm going to concentrate my filing at an angle that will not reduce the thickness at the top, only at the bottom, but um, I just want to take that little turn off where it's just flared out at the bottom. So I'm just going back into my uh, doming block, making sure I find one of the domes that isn't going to contact the outside of the setting and damage it. So I'm going to use my, use my chasing hammer to keep it dead flat. Then 
there we go that's taken that turned edge in a little bit I can work it a fraction more and we'll be about right there. and the stone fits onto the setting exactly where I want it now I'm going to hold the setting very lightly with my round nose pliers because I don't want to cause any unnecessary tool marks and as I mentioned earlier I'm concentrating the uh, pressure of the file just at the bottom of the setting rather than the top so you can just see where it's shiny you can see most of the uh, effort is round here and not at the top there now if you do uh, invest in a colic block then you'll find that these steps aren't necessary it's a worthwhile investment if you are taking this hobby art trade seriously Emery finish it ready for the next stage of the project. And the last thing to do before you continue making a piece of jewellery with the bezel setting is just to check that the top of the setting and the bottom of the setting are perfectly parallel and you can do that with your vernier gauge. So that can be turned into a claw setting or a nice piece of jewellery, good for solitaires, the correct angle. And that's how easy it is when you've got one of these bezel setting templates.